So in today's video, I'm going to be telling a story. It's going to take a while to tell the story, so I figured I would run home. Computer, turn off Studio B. Going to be a fun time. Computer, turn off Studio A. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I'm going to tell a story of how I got to this point, like how Aaron got here. So this mindset of being comfortable in the uncomfortable, it doesn't come from loving a physical activity like cycling, mountain biking, or running. It comes from something totally different. I believe this is where the people around you are the most important. And honestly, the people around me is where I've made the most gains mentally and physically in my life. So unfortunately, I left my pack and I've got this Osprey. Um, and it's ridiculously large, but it's either that or carry a bunch of crap. And so, so it should be a good time. <sighs> Go ahead, babe. So real quick, I love these QTs. They're great places when you're doing these like weird adventures. So I'm gonna go in here and get some gum, uh, a few Snickers bars, and this should hold me to another QT. Well, that was a quick uh, five minute little stop. So let's talk about how I got to this point. I wasn't this Aaron always. Like, that's the biggest thing that I want you to understand. I was not this positive, and I definitely was not this ambitious to like do crazy things like run a cold turkey 50K. And I was like 212 pounds, and a friend of mine, Scott Stewart, asked me to go mountain biking. I borrowed a friend's mountain bike. Actually, I borrowed my brother-in-law's bike. I started riding, and I loved it. And Scott was in such better physical shape than I was and would drag me through the trail and I would just feel like I'm gonna throw up every time. I loved it, I was committed. Actually, when I got my first mountain bike, I sold a Ford Mustang to have enough money to buy a mountain bike off Craigslist. Uh, another friend, Allison Dancy, let me borrow her road bike that she got when she was in high school. Diamondback, down tube shifters, still have that bike. And so in the first year, I lost like 60 pounds. I didn't do it for the health. I just did it for the sheer enjoyment. If you're trying to lose weight, find something that you love doing. Like, if you don't like running, don't run. If you don't like riding a bike, don't do it. If you don't like going to gym, don't do it. There's enough stuff that you can be active and you can enjoy doing what you're doing. So, I love cycling. I did not run at all. I didn't run until after my accident. We'll get to that a little later, but I gotta get back moving. Totally random, but a friend of mine told me that that place is really good. See, back in 2016, I met John Gordon. He's the first ultra athlete that I ever met, U ultra runner people that run long distances, like 100 miles. John didn't just run 100 miles, but he ran the Peach State race. I couldn't understand how people run 100 miles, let alone almost 300 miles on their feet. And so in June of 2016, John invited me on my first bikepacking trip, where we left from Concord, North Carolina, and rode all the way to the Florida state line on our bicycles. And shortly after this adventure is when I had the wildest ride on my bicycle. It's where I had my crash. So I'm an hour in, and the city of Charlotte is back there, trying to get into a rhythm, not feeling 100%. Normally it takes me a while to mentally get to where I wanna be. I'm not quite there yet. I'll get there, I'm confident of it, but I just gotta get into a groove. And during the next year of my life, I learned to be comfortable in the uncomfortable. See, I learned to deal with back pain while learning how to run. Yes, learning how to run. All right, there is the next QT, which is my next rest stop. 
I'll go in here and get a snack, get a drink, put on some warm clothes because man, it's getting chilly. My hands are red, so. On October 14th, 2017, a little over a year after my crash, I ran my first ultra marathon, 50K. See, five miles was the longest distance I had ever ran up until this race. And the only other race that I had ever done was a 5K. And the guy in the white shirt, that's John cheering me on. See, John showed me that the body is capable of so much more. This is where I begin my journey to press and see how far I could go physically and how far I could go mentally. Well, quick update. Uh, the temperature has dropped uh, and the wind has picked up. Definitely haven't hit a rhythm yet. That's just kind of frustrating, but I mean, if I walk it, I think I have like 20 miles to go, so. Well, just consistency is the key. One foot in front of the other. Uh, that's how I'm gonna eat this elephant, so. And four years later, I'm doing crazy adventures like this, honestly, because I met a crazy ultra runner like John Gordon. There's a greenway right back there. I started down it and it's not lit. And as much as I would definitely prefer to run that uh, because of safety, I'm not gonna run it because of safety. There's some shortcuts up here, so it may not be uh, 50k now that I'm going this way if it's not 50k I'm not gonna be mad at QT uh, my next rest stop so I told myself I would stop at the QT's and uh, just come across one so I'll uh, I'll stop yeah I know it's super dark, but I wanted to give you an update. I had a friend contact me. On the route that I was going, there was an armed gunman about a mile and a half from where I was uh, headed. So he gave me an alternate route. I'll definitely take that to avoid whatever that could have been. So currently this moment I'm in the on the back roads running parallel to I-85, which is probably actually a better safer route it's not as lit for sure but just trying to get relaxed and uh put some miles in that right there those lights that's great wolf lodge there's the sign oh man yeah Look at here! Oh my gosh! Guys, that's... Oh my gosh, Alan came and found me. gosh definitely hit the spot so why do a last minute 50k most of the thing that happens on this channel are the adventures that I'm a part of they're as much mental as they are physical they're actually probably more mental challenging than physical something that's very important to me is mental strength because at some point in time the physical is gonna fade I worked an entire week it was a busy week, put in a lot of hours, and I wanted to leave at four o'clock and just start running. Currently right now in the season that we're in, mental strength is, is extremely important. So I would challenge you, work on your mental strength. 
put yourself in some situations that you just have to be mentally tough. Go do something. Go do something that's hard. Go do something that you're proud of yourself. On a side note, holy crap, my feet hurt so stinking bad. This adventure is over. Yes, that is not my house, but this adventure is over. See, this was never about a distance. This was never about actually making it to my house. It was more of the mental challenge. I've run close to 30 miles. I've been on my feet for uh, six and a half hours. I've been moving, but this was for the mental challenge. Um, I challenge any of you, if you're doing these things, mental strength is very important. It's something to focus on. The physical, it'll come, but the mental strength, you can use sports and athletics and adventures to work on the mental strength because the mental strength converts over to real life. So I'll tell you this as well. I could not have completed this without a massive support system. First off to Sam for reaching out to me for Dustin to reaching out to me, Mike, Alan coming to see me, my mom calling me, my wife checking on me, Chad, all of the people that reached out to me and sent me love, Tim Womble for looking out for me. Uh, man, just, just the amount of support system that I had to complete this. So I wanna thank each and one of you. Uh, until next Thursday at 5 p.m., adios. There's my swag car. What if I, uh, what if I printed some of those and handed those out? I think that'd be cool. Anybody want any? Let me know.